Hello, my name is Shelby Vaughn, Pastor Full Gospel Tabernacle at 208 Washington Street in Anahuac, Texas. And I want to invite you to tune in and listen to my broadcast, Flames of Revival, on Faith Television Network. You will be the best. Welcome to Flames of Revival broadcast. This is Shelby Warner. So glad you tuned in. I'm back. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We've been talking about revelation. Revelation is an uncovering. When you get a revelation from God, you'll turn into somebody else. When you get a revelation from God, you have access. You know, it amazes me how Moses got to the point to where he felt so comfortable with God. And uh, I don't want to make it sound like it's not. But to where he said, God, I want to see you. <laughs> Moses said, God, I want to see you. And God said, well, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put you up in the cleft of this rock and I'm going to put my hand over so you can't see, you know. Uh, and then when, I, when I'm passing by, I'll move my hand and I'll let you see my back part. So God ad adhered to a man's request. You understand? See, see, listen, I, I, this is what I think. I don't think you ought to spend your whole life without getting to know God or working on getting to know God or knowing the ways of God. This is wonderful to me. It's, it's life. It's, it's interesting. It's fun. It's different. You know what I mean? It's not you got to be super religious, you know, and all of that. Forget that, man. I enjoy life. I tell you that, man, God is. God revealed some stuff today. It just, it's just wonderful. I can't, I can't explain to you how it feels. I'm doing the best I can. But I'm telling you, when you stumble in the right direction and you just do stuff and you don't know why, but it's, you're supposed to do it and you know it's in you and it's like the Spirit is telling you to do it. And I ain't talking about being deep and spooky either. And you just do it and it's the right thing to do at the right time. That is amazing to me. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's amazing to me. I'm telling you right now. I, and that's why I tell stories because, you know, it's like <laughs> God can do some things. I'm telling you, man, God can do some things. And so when, when you get a revelation, see, see, if I don't know a whole bunch of other stuff, I know that God can show me stuff to come. I know God can show me where things are. I know God can and show me what to do. I know God can order my steps. And I know that if God order my steps, I'll be at the right place at the right time. In fact, that's one of my uh, confessions. Lord, I thank you that I'm at the right place, that I'm at the right, at the right time. I hear the right conversation. Uh, I study the right lessons. I read the right books. I drive down the right street. I leave at the right time. I come back at the right time. I don't say that every day all the time, but God knows what I'm doing because I want to be at the right place at the right time. And the right time is whenever I'm supposed to be there. Got it? You understand? Because God, God knows everything. See, God knows. That, there's no future with God. Let me say that. That's that just, that just now, and that's now to come. There's a now, and there's a now to come. And God sees everything all at the same time. You understand? That's why he said, Jeremiah, you know, before I formed you, before I call you, uh, no, no, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I knew you. Before you were born, basically, I knew you, and I ordained you a prophet. I already know what I got called and that's calling. I already know what you're going to be. I, I, I knew you. I know you. You understand? God calls men. Got it? I wouldn't have called me to preach. I wouldn't have. But God did. You understand? I'm glad he did now, but, you know, it's like, oh, God, you need to find somebody better than me. And, you know, you call that excuse or whatever, whatever. But it's like, now, nah, God, you need to know somebody better than me because, you know, you know Shelby Vaughn, and he needs some help. And so you need, to, you need to do something for me. You need to help me. And so I understand that we have a God who knows everything. And instead of you being scared of him, well, well let me say it like this. As long as you just go to church and watch everybody else's life and go through the motions, but you don't ever take time to, to really study this word and, and, and just meditate on it and spend time with the Holy Spirit and let him talk to you and teach you. Unless you position yourself to do that, you're missing out on a whole lot of things you could have. 
This is not religion. This is a relationship. You understand? And God is able to deliver you from things and, and deliver you to things, if you will. God is able to show you things to come. So he can calm your heart down and God can let you see into another dimension. All right. Uh, some things, like I said, you can't say because um, you just can't. There are some things that God will show you ahead of time and you won't be able to tell nobody. And there are some things God will show you and, and, and he'll let you tell them later. But you can't tell them ahead. You understand? Uh, and so uh, this when I read these, you know, I was in fact. I was uh, looking at this the other day, and uh, <laughs> in fact, let me just let me just show you Acts uh, twelve. Acts twelve, verse one says, "Now about the time Herod the king stretched out his hand uh, to harass." This is what this translation says. Uh, some from the church, then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when they had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions, one or, or four squads, or four times four. Sixteen soldiers. Okay, now watch this. Looks like an impossible situation. They had 16 gods for this one man. <laughs> You, you understand? And I'll be looking at stuff like, wait, wait, why they needed so many? Why not just one guy on one side and one guy on the other side? No. They wanted to be sure Herod thought, oh, no, 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 he's going to put his muscle in place. And, and let me tell you something. Well, no. But anyway, vengeance is mine. That's what God said. I'll repay. So you don't have to worry about, you know, people putting their muscle in place because they don't have no muscle. God said, I'll be not against the man or woman of God. You got no muscle. What muscle? The, God said, I'll be an enemy to your enemies, and I'll be an adversary to your adversaries. That's what God said. I can tell you some story, but I won't now. But I'm telling you right now, you know, I had a whole lot of people try to stop me, and they got stopped. But I didn't. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, man, just leave me alone. I just want to serve God. That's it. I, you know, whatever you do, that's what you do. But I want to serve God, so leave me alone. You know, and then I tell people who, who, who don't believe what I believe and, and they want to start a problem or they just don't allow it, they make it verbalized. Well, I don't believe in all that. Well, that's all right, bro. You know, and this is what I tell them. This is what I tell everybody. If they want to know, if we get that far, I say, well, here's the way I think. I don't get to tell you what to do. You don't get to tell me what to do. We good. And I mean that. You understand? I don't get to tell you what to do. No. But you don't get to tell me what to do either. See? And if people would start to live like that, they'll be amazed at what freedom they have. You know what I mean? Because, see, see, when you get a revelation of, of when you start getting a revelation from God, you start understanding who you are. And you understand. They are, this, this. This Herod here, he didn't understand. He attacking a man of God. He didn't know. You know, you attacking Peter? Okay. All right. And, and he thought, you know, he had his posse in place. He got his 16 cats. Well, they're not cats, but you know. Uh, these are uh, 16 guards for this one man. Because he had arrested him and he had intended to kill him when the Passover was over. Now, watch this. Verse 5 says, Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And I think that the art of prayer is what people ought to get back to. You understand? If you see people in the church or whoever it is, you know, if they need prayer, pray for them. You see somebody slipping, pray. You see they got a problem, pray. You see they're not doing right, pray. You're not doing right, pray. You see somebody getting in trouble, pray that God would have mercy on them. Pray. Men are not always to pray and not to faith. All right? So he was kept in prison, but constant prayer was, was offered to God for him in, by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, okay, understand what the situation. That night, Peter was sleeping 
Boy, they really didn't want him to get away. <laughs> Bound with two chains between two soldiers and the guard before the door were keeping the prison. What? So, I mean, they really had him all wrapped up. It's like, oh, we got him now. So four of y'all, we're going to change you to him. And then you other 12, you know, y'all just going to be out in the front. He's he not getting away. So you had 16 people watching one man. Seemed like, it just seemed like 16 guard, pro trained professionals, should have been able to handle this one little preacher. Hmm. And they wanted to be sure they handled him. And so, I'm a, we're going to chain ourselves to him. You ain't getting away. <laughs> Man, that's why you better know Jesus. I'm telling you right now. Now watch this. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, now watch. All his others were in front of the door, and some was chained to Peter. Okay, now watch. Now behold, an angel of the Lord. So God sent an angel. Do you understand that if you belong to God, that, that angels encamp around those who fear God. That's what the Bible says. You got angels that encamp around you because you fear God. Got it? I'm telling you, you got some divine protection. <laughs> you understand? Watch this. The angel, and, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, get up quickly, and his chains fell off. He didn't have to chisel, they just fell off. Then the angel said to him, gird yourself up and go get your sandals. And so he did. Now, see, with me, I'd have been telling that. I just think I would have. I've been telling the angel, that's all right. I got some more shoes at home. That's all right. Come on. <laughs> While they sleep, come on. <laughs> oh, boy. Man, I like this Bible. Man. Anyway, angel told him to get his stuff, and, and we're getting out of here. That's what he told him. We, and follow me. So he did. So they went out and they followed him, and he didn't know what was done because he thought he was having a vision and all. But I believe the glory came in with the angels, and the next thing you know, the door started opening by itself, and then he was out before he knew it. So the plan that men had for him, as long as he trusted God, it wasn't going to come to pass. And what I'm trying to tell you is as long as you trust God and you, you got, got the heart of God and you intend to uh, please your God and you want God to be glorified in your heart and in your life, well, then you'll be amazed at how God will take care of you. You understand? You'll be, I can tell you some stories. I'm telling you, I've had guns pull. I've had all kinds of stuff happen. But I'm still here. You understand what I'm saying? And I never was afraid. Never. That was never. Ne I mean, never. I mean, not one time. You understand? None time. I met these racist guys one time, and I, you probably heard the story. And I was taking Sister Wilborn back because her daughter had got killed in an accident, and these guys were drunk, and, you know, and I blew the horn at them because they was about to hit our car, and they was waving at me with one finger, you know. Hello, that finger wave. And then uh, I had to get off and get some gas way up on the right, and when I went way back there, because we was about to run out of gas because I wasn't paying attention because I was trying to comfort her because her daughter had died. And so we went back there, and uh, that was when you could just pay and go in. You know I mean? Just get, pump the gas and, and go in. So I paid, I pumped the gas, and I went in. And when I went in, you know, there was all these rebel flags out there. <laughs> yes, sir. And there was a tavern. And when I walked in, I'm telling you, if hate, if eyeballs and stairs could have killed me, I would have dropped dead. And so when I went in, Country Western Music was playing, everybody stand, about 50 people in there. I said, okay, since the wheelbone was out in the car. Uh, no, I'm not afraid. You know, I wasn't afraid then. I said, okay. And so I gave the lady my money and she turned her back and all that and then these two guys same guys I saw up the road they started walking up there and she started doing this go 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 thinking no so now she gave me my change and I'm taking my money and turning it around and unfolding the corners and all that and she was trying to rush me out because she was afraid so the guy came up there and said hey you know he drunk racist you could tell what you drive a green Chevrolet about 10 miles up the road there I said yep he said, well, you almost hit my car. You know that? Everybody heard what he was saying. The music went off. I said, is that right? He said, yeah. He said, you could get hurt bad in these parts. Do you know that? I said, really? And so I started smiling. Well, he didn't like it. <laughs> he said, yeah, it's evident to me 
that you don't know who I am and you don't know who part of country you and you can get hurt bad in these parts. I say, is that right? And I smile. Man, he turned red as a beat. So I walked out and I started walking toward the car. And when I did, he was walking behind me, him and this other guy. And then he looked back at somebody and he signaled him. He did his head like that. So when I, when I was at the edge of the building walking back to the car, and as soon as I got past the edge of the car, these side doors swung open, bam, and hit the side of the, the building. And these two great big boys, oh, man, they was coming after me. You understand? Barefoot, greasy looking barefoot, no shirt, coverall. And here they come. Been drinking, here they come. <laughs> Grunting. <laughs> so I saw them coming. And I looked, and this, that's all I did. I said, okay, Lord, here they come. That's all I said. I said, okay, Lord, here they come. You know, because I made a deal with God. I said, as long as you take care of me, I ain't going to do nothing to nobody. I said, but if you stop, I'm going to start. And I meant that, you know, for real. <laughs> but anyway, uh, them guys started running at me. I mean, they didn't want to shake my hand either. You know, you can see they wanted to hurt me. Back, big old, look like twins. They're big old boys. And they running at me, and I was real skinny back then, for real. And they running at me real hard, and, you know, and so I'm just, I stopped, and I'm just looking at them. And I'm telling you, they came up about 20, maybe 30 yards from where I was, maybe a little bit more than that. And they stopped, and they started looking up over my head, and they started screaming and backpedaling. <gasps> and they started running backwards. And I'm thinking, what is going on with these guys? They weren't even looking at me no more. They were looking over my head. And they were running back with they had an old brown truck. They jumped in the truck and took off. Boom, passed by me, throwing rocks everywhere. So when I got in the car, I said to Wilma, I said, what happened? What's going on? I said, and I saw I explained to her. She said, what did you say? I said, I didn't say nothing to them. I just said, okay, Lord, here they come. I said, that's all I said. And so I always wondered what happened. Because they didn't never, they, they were scared to death. They backed up. They kept looking over my head. I said, I wonder what happened. What, 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 what's wrong with these boys? What hell? What's wrong with them? Because, you know, I didn't see nothing. I didn't see nothing. And so I remember about three, four years later, about four years later, I was fasting and praying. I said, God, I certainly would like to know what happened that day. Because, you know, I mean, I don't know what happened because I didn't see nothing. And I'm telling you, as I was praying, it's like God took me back in time to the same event, to the same spot. And what happened was, it's like I was looking at a movie of the thing that already happened. What happened was they had an angel standing behind me with a drawn sword, and he was standing up like this, and he was looking down on them, and they was looking up at him. And I was standing there because I didn't know that was going on, but God was showing me. It looked like this angel was 16 feet tall, maybe, I don't know, but he was huge. And he was just standing there like this with a sword looking down at them. And they saw him drunk. And, and, and all, you know, races and all, they saw him. They didn't run from me. They ran from what they saw over my head because they thought I was by myself, but I wasn't. Glory to God. You understand? See, here's what I know. I can't die before my time. And I ain't scared to die. I ain't scared to die. You know, I'm going to just go to sleep. I'm gone. I just step out of this body and go home. But I'm not going home now. And I'm not dying early because I trust God and I lean not to my own understanding. You understand? And so what I'm telling you is, you, you know, this ain't just stuff in the book. The same stuff God did in the Bible, he can do right now. But you need to study to show yourself, not to argue, not to fuss, not to promote my doctrine. Study to show yourself. Study to show you. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if you can rightly divide it, you can wrongly divide it. So you study to know what God is able to do. And then you, you, you're in a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth is with me everywhere I go. That's the way you need to think. So he can guide me. He's going to tell me what to do, how to do it. He's going to show me things to come. You understand? And so as I spend time with my God, then all of a sudden I'm comfortable, I'm, I'm, I'm comforted. And at the same time, I'm knowledgeable. Not because I know a whole bunch, but God will just show me what's coming. He'll tell me what sermon to preach. He'll tell me when to preach them. 
He'll tell me what testimonies to give. He'll tell me what to say. He'll tell me when to pray. He'll tell me when to leave it alone. God is just, man, it's a partnership. Let, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you what's up. Something, something just happened the other day. And I'm thinking, man, I know I tell a lot of stories, and I know people believe me, but they need to know this is real. This ain't no joke. Okay, so here's the deal. Make a long story short. I was at church, and I, I was saying, Lord, you know what? And we got a keyboard already. We got it. I can't play none of it, but we got one. <laughs> so I was sitting there, and I said, Lord, that keyboard is all right, but I, I, want, I, I, I want one of them nice keyboards. I mean nice. You know, the Yamaha with all the little thing, you know, you play it, it play by itself, and you got all the sound effect, and you can change them, you know, with all the buttons that I don't know nothing about, no way. I don't know how to play it. I don't know about the button. All I know is I want one. I said, I just want one. I ain't want no new one, but I wanted one. You understand? And so I just said it. I said, Lord, you know, that'd be nice. I said, because I, I might learn how to play. I might do something. I could play with it if I don't learn how to play. I'm just talking. You understand? I'm meditating at church, and I said, okay. And then they got the little place right around the corner to sell clothes and sell TVs and all that kind of stuff. And so the Spirit of God led me go in there. Now, I understand I go in there because I support them. What I do, to make a long story short, what I'll do is I'll go in there sometime and I'll buy clothes. Got it? And I might wear them one time and then take them back. Uh, a lot of times I got a whole basket full right now, a big bag full. I, I didn't even wear I bought them. And then what I do is I buy them and I put them in a bag and I take them back. And that way, the people working, they, you know, I'm, I'm doing business with them, so we're doing a transaction. So I give them money, and they give me the clothes, and I take them, and then little by little, I ease them back in there. And most of them, I don't even wear. You know what I mean? I just give them back to them, or whatever. You know what I mean? So that's just what I do. So that way, these older people and crippled people and all of that, they, they perform in a service, and I'm spending money with them. And then I go give it back, and all of that, you know, so they feel like I'm working and like I'm, so that's what I do. That's what I do. I went around, I went in there, now I understand, and then they give all their religious stuff free. And I like that. They give all their Bibles free, uh, cassette tape, because I still, I'm still a cassette tape man and VHS man. I still got, I ain't threw none of my stuff away. I still like them, you know what I mean? And so, because I do, you know, I spent a whole bunch of money buying them cassettes and ain't throwing them away. So I got stuff that'll play them. Got it? And so, Everything religious, they'll just give it to you. You know, you, oh, that's a Bible, that's free. Oh, that's, that's some Bible books, that's free. Oh, there's some tapes, that's free. Oh, some CDs about Ken Copeland or whoever, that's free. Oh, this is Joyce My her books. and Oh, this is Joel Osteen's book, they free. And they just give them to you. Anything that's religious at all, they give it away free. So every now and then I go find me a little treasure here, treasure there, you know. I could buy it, but why? You're going to give it to me free. Anyway, to get to the end of the story, I'm, I'm walking. You got one part and you got the other part where, the, where they bring the stuff in. So I went in, and I saw a keyboard, Yamaha, not one of these big, big ones, you know, but about this big, nice, nice size, not the little, but the mid-sized one, you know, with all the buttons and all of that. And so I said, okay. I said, this thing work? I'm talking to the guy, the little guy, crippled, he, he's crippled, his name's Steven. So we talk all the time, you know, the book man, that's what he called me, because he know what I come in there for. So we always talk. And I said, hey, man, I said, that, that right there, I said, do it work? He said, yeah, I think so. They just brought it in the other day. I said, oh, that's nice. I said, okay. So I said, do you have a plug in? You know, because we, I wanted to test it and all that so they didn't have one. I said, I don't, ma I don't care. I'm going to take it because I made up my mind. I don't care what they say. I'm going to buy it, take it. And if it don't work, I'll just bring it back. Ain't no big deal to me, you know, because it wasn't. <laughs> and so the guy was saying, man, if you got, and I got all kind of adapters at church and all that. So I'm thinking, I got one that'll fit. So to make a long story short, I went, I, I went up there, and uh, I said, here you go. So I put the thing up there. He said, you know what? Uh, we're going to charge you $5 for that. <laughs> and I started laughing. $5. You got it? And then when I hooked it all up, it played good. It sounded real good. You know what I mean? I mean, you could use it for a church service if you know how to play it. I don't. But it's, it's, it's nice. You understand? But it, that ain't the point. It's Yamaha, all that. But that ain't the point. Five dollars. But that ain't the point. I said it. Now, I understand. I ain't never seen none of that. That place been open two or three years. I ain't never seen no keyboard in there, ever. Not except a little toy one for a little bitty kid. But I ain't never seen. But the day I said it was the day I was led, and, the, and I got it. Got it? If I don't never play it, if I don't never give it back. You understand? Now, see, see, I want you to understand that I'm a real preacher. But I got a real life, just like you. 
See, and I could, I could, you know, I got four years of Bible school, you know. I got all kind of education and stuff. I ain't no big deal to me. You know, I'm glad I studied. But the point is, is I want you to understand that I like to take the Bible and, and I want it to work. And I want the blessing of the scriptures. And I want to be able to take this and break it down and teach people. You understand? I can use big words and all of that. That ain't going to do you no good. You understand? I can talk about all kind of stuff. But it's not going to do you no good. I don't want to play that game. I don't want to do that. That's not my calling. What I want to do is take this and break it up and give you so many bite-sized pieces till you understand to where you start believing that you can lay hands on the sick and you can cast out devils and you can see uh, what's coming and you can know what to do and you can lay hands on the sick and you can cast out devils and you can have a prosperous life by the basic simple teaching of the scripture, not the deep stuff that take you six months to understand. Got it? No, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about like John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You understand? I'm talking about in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so if I can create an appetite in you with the word to where you want to study the word, and well, well, then I'm doing my job. You understand? And if you're already a student of the word and I can say something to help you get close to God, and all, well, then it's going to help your life. You understand? Because God is helping me recognize some stuff uh, in the Bible that, that I never did see before. Like one time Peter was in jail, and another time, and they said that, you know, that uh, they, the, the angels got him out, and when they were looking for him, the, the prison door was still locked, and, and the soldiers were still in place. So they didn't know how they got out. They saw him out there preaching, but so I don't know if the angels opened the door and closed it or they walked through to get through it or whatever. I don't know what happened. All I know is the soldier was there when they found out in the morning and they said, them guys we locked up, they're out there preaching. How did they get out? I don't know. All, I know an angel got them out, but I mean, what happened? I mean, how come these soldiers didn't see him or did he open the door or did they just walk through the door or whatever? See, I'm interested in the supernatural. A man baptizing a man, and then he come up out of the water, and then he and Azotus, which is 26 miles away. Did he fly there? Did he disappear and show back up? A man walking the earth and told the people he knew the future. He knew what was coming. He said, today, I'm going home. God is going to send me horses and chariots and fire. You think maybe they thought he was crazy back in his day? You kidding me? But he knew it. They saw it. It happened. I want to know God like that. You understand? When I get a revelation, I'll start knowing him better and better, and so will you. All right? So, I'm out of time. I'm done for the day. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Shelby Vaughn from Anahuac, Texas. Remember, you got what it takes, and it takes what you got to change the whole world. God bless you. I'm going to see you next time on the air. Bye. Ow! Ow! Welcome to Flames of Revival Broadcast. This is Shelby Warner. I'm Pastor of Full Gospel Tabernacle in Anahuac, Texas. And I want to give you a personal invitation. Uh, if you're ever in the Anahuac area, you need to come visit. We have our regular service at uh, Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. And uh, on Wednesday is our Bible study night at 7 o'clock. All right? And uh, we pray for the sick. If that's what you need, come on. You are welcome. This is my personal invitation to you. Also, you can tune in the Faith Television Network. I'm on at 7.30 in the morning and 7.30 at night. And uh, I think I can teach you some things. The name of the broadcast is Flames of Revival. And I'll be looking to see you there. Can I testify?